Hello, hello, more demons here and welcome to the quarterfinals of Earthings Masters 2020. This, of course, is the part of the Champions Chess Tour organized by Chess24.com platform. Uh, and at the end, I will show you uh, all the scores. So what just happened during these quarterfinals? That was the first day of the quarterfinals. We're going to have the second day as well. Uh, but before I'm going to do that, first, I would like to show you the most exciting games of the quarterfinals. So uh, we have Wesley So who's gonna play as white and Maxime Vachiel Lagraffe who's going to play as black and this game is just insane. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. We have E4, C5 by Maxime Vachiel Lagraffe. So a Sicilian defense on the board. We have Knight F3, we have D6, D4, open Sicilian, C takes on D4, Knight takes on D4 and now Knight F6 attacking the pawn on e4 we have knight c3 we have a6 so Nidorf um, in the sicilian very sharp we have bishop e3 main line and now instead of going for the most popular e5 or e6 we have knight g4 very aggressive by maxime vachel lagraf attacking the bishop on e3 uh, so wesley so uh, has a choice bishop c1 or bishop g5 what would you choose in this position uh, Wesley so actually choose uh, both of them so we have we have bishop c1 first knight f6 uh, bishop e3 we have knight g4 and instead of uh, threefold repetition we have bishop g5 uh, we have h6 uh, bishop h4 we have g5 uh, bishop g3 and now bishop g7 pretty natural bringing the bishop to this diagonal and now h3 kicking the knight and the knight retreat to e5 and now knight f5 attacking the bishop on g7 so black doesn't have much choice we have bishop f5 giving up the pair of bishops however look at um, the continuation this is just insane it's of course still the theory e takes on f5 and after knight b to c6 uh, we have knight d5 we have also e6 and now this is very interesting for the one of the first times when it was played by Peter Sfiedler in 2005 uh, against Veselin Topalov and Topalov won uh, after Peter Sfiedler went for knight e3. Uh, so that was the idea. However, here uh, we have, you know, uh, 15 years later, the theory changed. F takes on E6 is the most uh, promising line. F takes on E6 and only now Knight E3. Uh, Queen A5 with the check C3. And now look at this. This is completely insane. So first, Maxime Vachel Lagraffe, it's not the first time he played that before a couple of times, is knight f3 sacrificing the knight uh, with the idea of the attack on the, on the c3 and now before the most popular line was queen f3 and after bishop c3 uh, of course not b takes on c3 because the queen can uh, double attack on the on the king and the, and the rook so king d1 and then queen a4 knight c2 bishop b2 now attacking the rook anyway and the rook cannot come to b1 because the queen can come uh, on a2 and win the rook anyway so uh, that's not possible pretty crazy stuff this is the part of the theory however the modern theory says uh, g takes on f3 and now this was played by anish giri uh, it was not the novelty but uh, he was cursing on the on twitter that he played that actually uh, in the rapid time control he should keep it of course for the more serious uh, games however g takes on f3 looks like the must much more promising move uh, it was not the novelty however it was played in 2011 uh, by the lower ranked players 2400 uh, that was the ranking so that was his preparation uh, however this looks like much more stronger now why uh, because now after bishop c3 b takes on c3 uh, queen c3 
now the queen can come to d2 now for your information if you would like to preserve the rook you're gonna get into the troubles because knight d4 uh, wins the queen the king has nowhere to go so um queen d4 and after queen d4 we're gonna have the queen for three pieces uh but also keep in mind that uh, black gonna have two extra pawns so pretty much a very comfortable game for black maybe not very comfortable but white still need couple of moves to consolidate uh, bring the rook to the game and maybe hide the king as well very very sharp and crazy variations uh, this is why we have queen d2 is this is the main idea here queen a1 uh, and now knight d1 and this position was reached by Maxime Vachel Lagraffe against Anish Giri uh, in 2019 and Anish Giri actually won that game so what happened was queen d4 that was the main uh, preparation by mvl uh, and after bishop d3 refusing to exchange the queens uh, we had rook f8 and after the castle so very simple uh, we had rook f3 uh, knight e3 uh, and so on and anish giri as i said won that game but this is completely insane here Maxime actually improved and he played queen f6 so this is new idea now he is attacking f3 so bishop g2 pretty natural uh, and of course white can castle uh, immediately so we have rook d8 and now castle was possible actually but uh, Wesley so decided that he want to be more active uh, and he played f4 so now how to continue we have knight d4 pretty crazy stuff because now white have to be very very careful first of all this pawn is unprotected so if the pawn is taken the problem is after d5 the castle is not longer possible so king would have to stay on um, on e1 or play something like a king f1 or g2 uh, because if the castle happens then of course we're gonna have knight f3 winning the queen that would be the beautiful fork so that's the first idea also castle immediately doesn't work because after g takes on f4 bishop f4 queen f4 queen f4 knight e2 against wins back the material and also black gonna have one extra exchange so the rook for the bishop and also a couple of pawns two extra pawns so of course that should be enough to win the game so white have another possibilities here probably f takes on g5 would be the best also very crazy because after knight f3 uh, now of course taking uh, the knight the queen would take uh, with the attack on the rook so uh, rook would have to move to g1 and the king again couldn't castle so probably king e2 now this queen is under attack this queen is under attack what is going on here uh probably knight d4 then king f1 and only then um h takes on g5 knight e3 uh, and this king somehow had to get to uh, h2 and uh, still black have this uh, open semi open file uh, maybe some attacks are possible so very very crazy position uh, so this is why we have knight e3 first uh, and of course mvl doesn't wait for f takes on g5 so first we have um, the pawn g takes on f4 and now knight g4 with the attack on the queen and now look at this if the queen want to keep an eye on the on the knight the problem is there are not many squares probably only g7 but then bishop h4 attacking the rook and if the rook is moved then the bishop can come to f6 and make a beautiful skewer but also attack on the uh, on the knight so probably rook f8 and after bishop d8 king d8 uh, then white could actually castle so that's not what uh, black would like to see on the board this is why we have queen f5 so what is going on here sacrifice another piece so the knight is under attack and this is gonna come with tempo because the rook gonna be under attack but keep in mind that the king still stays in the center so this is why uh, after a uh, queen f4 of course castle is still possible and then just uh 
white agree for f takes on uh, g3 and after queen d4 rook f8 uh, and this is pretty much playable for both of the sides but as you see uh, again this is crazy completely crazy uh putting the pressure on f2 of course you know h5 is coming uh this pawn is still you know putting the pressure on f2 and so on so pretty crazy position uh wesley so didn't want that he played queen d4 uh, and now what is the idea because the rook is under attack uh, but first we have queen b1 with the check and if white decide to exchange the queen, so queen d1, uh, then black would get to very comfortable endgame where um, having a rook and two pawns uh, against the two pieces. So black is slightly better here, of course, uh, still, you know, the, the end game, uh, it's uh, sti still pretty, pretty long, uh, but definitely uh, black would have very comfortable game. So this is why white want to uh, avoid the exchange and we have king e2. Uh, queen a2 this cost the pawn and now again exchange for the for the queen or not or maybe uh move the king to e1 or f1 but black would have the chance for threefold repetition uh so this is why we have king f3 by wesley so pretty crazy stuff now uh, and now we have queen b3 with the check and now look at the position of this queen it will be very very important so definitely this was the home preparation of maxime vachiel lagraf now this queen is defending b7 uh is controlling the third rank and also it's controlling f7 which after pushing the pawn to e5 gonna be extremely important to set up the defense so look at this and now uh, we have very very interesting um, game if you would like to play for example something like king f4 it looks like it's very very interesting line uh, after e5 you could go for knight e5 the problem is black doesn't need to take uh, the knight because black have much more a promising option with the castle and now the king has to go so king g4 and now after queen e6 uh, that's of course gonna be the, the checkmate so that's not possible so uh, knight e3 was played by Wesley so pretty crazy stuff so far uh, and now if the castle is played uh, I will just show you one of the lines here it's, it's extremely crazy and the little details matter so now if the castle uh, and then bishop f4 what could happen is for example rook f4 and after king f4 e5 uh, and now the point is after king g3 e takes on d4 there is this bishop d5 forking the king and uh, sorry about that and the queen so this this would be just insane uh queen d4 knight d5 and now white stands slightly better because these pawns are completely ugly yes there are two uh, connected past pawns uh but it's not that attractive and according to the engine white stands better this knight is much more better than these three pawns uh, so definitely that was the option uh, this is why we have rook f8 so the king stays in the center not on g8 this is very important uh, and now if bishop f4 we would have e5 uh, and now there are two ways of continuing uh, if you would like to move the queen you have to be extremely careful if you move for example if you want to ex uh, avoid the exchange of the queens and play something like queen d2 uh, then of course you would end in the losing position e takes on f4 and this knight is also pinned so can be taken um, for example king e2 f takes on e3 uh, and of course now what would happen happen is black have the exchange extra and also two extra pawns so uh this of course is winning for black so uh white would be forced to actually exchange the queens queen d5 uh but then rook f4 if queen e4 then of course rook f4 winning the queen so um rook f4 king g3 uh, and after exchanging we would have knight d5 uh 
and probably something like rook c4 uh, and so on. So the game can continue, but of course black gonna have this dangerous pawns and in this configuration with two rooks probably that would be enough uh, to win the game or at least having the uh, very comfortable end game. So this is why we have bishop h4, so another complications are coming, so bishop is pointing on the rook uh, and now first we have e5, so kicking the the queen to e4 uh, and now look how important is the position of the queen the queen controls actually f7 very very important now another option would be queen d5 exchanging the queens immediately uh, but first f takes on e3 with the attack on the on the on the king with the check king e2 and only now queen d5 bishop d5 e takes on f2 uh, and now bishop d8 and again, uh, this pawn is lost, so probably uh, the best idea would be first uh, create the queen, and after force exchange of the of the of the rooks, uh, we would have uh, king f1, and now again that would be the end game where we have the bishop for uh, three pawns. Uh, definitely no risk for black, uh, much more comfortable uh, position for black, so this is why white doesn't want to exchange. According to the engine this is a draw, however definitely white would come into some troubles, would have to play very very precise to actually uh, draw that game. So that was one of the options, but white of course want to avoid the exchange of the queen. So we have queen e for now uh, challenging g6 square with some check with the idea of this bishop staying on this diagonal it already looks pretty pretty dangerous we have f takes on e3 uh, and now uh, there is the check of course the discovered check so king g3 first and now i would like to show you extremely uh, insane line which was shown in the in the studio what would happen if the queen g8 um, with the check so of course a king h2 and now rook f4 winning the bishop but the things are not that easy because after queen b7 look what is going on yes uh, the bishop is under attack but at the same time this bishop can come first to c6 with the check but also to d5 with the attack on the queen so bishop d5 queen g6 keeping an eye on f7 otherwise we would have the checkmate here uh, and then rook g1 with the idea of checkmate on g8 and this is completely insane because black have only one defending possibility here and now black have to fight for the draw rook h3 uh, of course king h3 is forced and now queen h5 with the check king g3 and now black have to find perpetual check which is extremely difficult because queen g5 just doesn't work because after king f3 you cannot take the rook of course because you're gonna get checkmated so that's the first thing uh, you have to play something like queen f4 the problem is uh, the king gonna run around and everything would be fine uh, if you just run around this way uh, and you know we would have a threefold repetition with this pattern However, the problem is that white also have king f5 and now after uh, queen f4 the king can hide in e6. Incredible position because now the king cannot be checked uh, because the rook controls g4 and there is the checkmate also on uh, e7. Uh, and if queen f8 is played then of course we're gonna have bishop c6 and that would lead to the checkmate. So this is completely insane stuff. After king g3 uh, queen g5 doesn't work however e4 works as a charm because the queen still controls f7 and now the queen can come to f3 and also f2 so now if white actually takes that pawn there is no more checkmate threat on f7 and now queen g5 works as a charm because now queen f3 of course losing the rook uh, because there is no checkmate on f7 it's pretty pretty much very crazy stuff a uh, king h2 would be forced and now 
now queen h4 and we're gonna have uh, of course the threefold repetition not much choice if you come to h3 you're gonna lose the rook uh, so king h1 and now again queen h4 king g2 uh, queen h4 and we're gonna have the threefold repetition white doesn't have much choice if king f1 this is of course losing uh because of e2 and uh, if uh, king uh, e1 then of course we're gonna have the the rook lost and after king d2 uh we're gonna have you know two queens uh win the game uh, and also if you play something like king f2 uh then again queen g1 uh, and uh, black gonna uh, promote to the queen and also win the game uh, with e so th that was not possible this is why uh in this position king h2 and we would have threefold repetition uh this way so completely crazy line it looks very attractive for black you know winning the bishop but black would have to fight for a draw so this is why we have e takes on f2 with the check uh, and now the king has to go to h2 and here this pawn gonna be lost so this is why maxim vashiel lagraf promote to the knight with the check so doesn't want to give the tempo to wesley so and now if the rook uh, takes then of course maxim want to exchange as much material as possible uh, so this is why wesley took with the bishop uh, misplacing the bishop for the moment uh, and this gives the time to play rook c8 uh, so now the rook is not long longer under attack bishop g2 uh, and now if rook c2 immediately uh, and if white tries to uh, for example attacking chances with queen g6 uh, then after king d7 uh, let's say rook d1 keep in mind that this queen still uh, focusing on f7 defending this pawn so if you would like to for example you know attack the the rook uh, double attack or something the rook always can come to f7 uh, uh, and also if the king moves the queen always control b7 uh, even if the bishop uh, supports here uh, there is no problem probably rook d1 would be the answer i would like to just show you one of the craziest line what could appear here is rook g2 immediately uh, and now of course if the king takes on g2 we're gonna have rook g8 uh, winning the queen as also g8 is under control so that's one of the things a uh, queen g2 would be forced and then queen d1 winning the rook but then queen b7 with check this is just insane uh king e6 and now queen e7 winning also that rook back so king d8 uh, winning the material we would have the bishop again uh, against this three pawn so completely crazy stuff for the engine this is completely you know normal it's the drawing position however you know for the human definitely everybody would like to uh, play with the three pawns much more chances of of course uh, for winning but definitely uh, the position is just insane we have rook g8 so maxim vashiel lagraf want to first bring the rook to g8 uh, and now focus on g2 and then then after that bring also another rook to c2 uh, and attack the bishop uh, we have rook g1 defending also uh, keep in mind that queen g6 is not possible anymore because rook is controlling g6 uh, and now we have rook g7 bishop f6 kicking the the rook so now we have rook f7 and now yes the queen can come to g6 pin the rook but it's not that dangerous king can go even to d7 uh the rook is of course under protection bishop b7 maybe could be unpleasant however it's still you know rook c2 uh bishop goes back to g2 and now e4 uh, and this pawn gonna gonna promote of course bishop cannot take because of the pin and the queen cannot take uh because the bishop is under attack uh, so probably bishop h4 but then queen e6 and supporting the march of the pawn uh maybe queen g8 uh, and with still some attacks on the on the d8 uh but it's nothing you know dangerous uh it's still pretty much very playable for both the sides but 
the game is just insane how uh, difficult and complicated lines we can see here. However, we have queen g4 and this actually allowed Maxime Vachel Lagraffe to exchange the queens. So what is the idea? First attacking the hanging piece, the, the rook, and, and also threatening some um, queen to g8. However, uh, here black could play queen c4 immediately, uh, forcing to exchange the queens also protecting the, the rook. And if white uh, doesn't want to exchange the queens, which would be pretty natural, uh, queen f3, then we're gonna have queen f4 and uh, white are forced to exchange the queens. And now we would have again uh, two rooks against uh, the rook and the bishops, but keep in mind four pawns that would be enough to win so definitely that would that was the option queen c4 was on the board probably winning for maxim vasil lagraf but he wanted to pin the bishop first uh, but now we have queen g8 uh, king d7 and now if you would like to play queen d8 which is not a bene the best move in the position uh king e6 that is the that is the point uh, and now this bishop is under attack probably bishop h4 would be forced uh, but now uh queen a4 very important move controlling e8 otherwise the queen gonna come to e8 uh, and win the rook this is just insane. Uh, White would be uh, probably eager to play king h1 uh, and after rook c4 attacking this bishop, then bishop g3 uh, and now queen d7 and try to exchange the, the queen this way. Uh, maybe queen h8 and the game could continue. Uh, this, the stuff is just, uh, just insane what's going on here. Uh, but yeah, this is how it is. So uh, queen d8 was possible but first wesley so wanted to have the bishop on h4 and now of course a queen d8 followed by queen e8 would be deadly this is why maxime vachel lagraf played absolutely the best move in the position boom bishop f3 threatening the checkmate in one on h3 uh, and now the position uh, is is just crazy again how many times i said that because every move uh, makes the position even more crazy now queen g4 it looks like very attractive however after uh, king c7 uh, finally king h1 now this rook would be under attack but probably rook g2 uh, of course uh, queen cannot take uh, on g2 because we would have uh, the rook on h3 so the only move would be king g2 and now after rook f4 uh, probably king g7 with check now king cannot come to b6 because the bishop would come to f2 with the tempo uh, so probably king c6 uh, and now rook c1 with the check so again uh, rook c4 probably forced to exchange uh, the rooks and only now bishop f2 uh, and again this position looks like completely winning for black but the engine says this is the draw as this pawn gonna fall and white gonna have the counterplay on them on the h file uh, and also this bishop is extremely uh strong on the dark square so uh another extremely you know complicated position uh but now we have queen d8 with the check and again uh if you try to, uh, to play for example king e6 you would get into uh queen e7 uh if you get with the king to d5 the rook would come to d1 that's the first thing so probably king f5 and then after queen f6 king e4 uh queen g6 and now king d5 defending on the the pawn on d6 and now as the rook is pinned then probably rook f1 trying to win uh so rook g2 would be forced and uh, now after queen g2 e4 and again this pawn could be very very dangerous a central pawn uh, it can be protected very strong so black would have very very interesting position here but also it's still very very complicated so uh, uh king e6 was possible but 
we have king c6 so maxim vashila graf uh, prefers to move the the king to c6 uh, and now we have bishop g3 now of course the bishop cannot be taken because the rook is pinned so this is extremely crazy uh, and now finally we have queen e6 maxim said okay enough now i'm gonna push my pawn and here it was very important for white to actually play king h1 now king h1 uh of course this rook is under attack so it can be taken probably uh rook g2 was forced uh, king g2 and now rook b3 uh because otherwise rook b1 would be extremely dangerous with the idea of the of the queen b6 and so on however anticipating that wesley so went for rook b1 uh, immediately so he got this idea queen b6 which is extremely dangerous it's of course gonna follow with the queen b7 and so on and this pawn is gonna gonna fall and look at these bishops very beautiful placed uh, defending the position of the king however this is the moment where you can pause the video and find the winning continuation for Maxim Vashil Lagraf. Both of the players have 30 seconds on the clock, so you can pause for 30 seconds uh, or longer if you need. But if you want to, you know, become Maxim Vashil Lagraf, pause this for 30 seconds. Uh, try to find the winning continuation while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? Uh, completely insane. I hope you found it the only winning continuation for black. The only winning other moves are just losing is rook g2. Bang. Uh, and this is sacrifice the exchange. Of course, the king has to take. Uh, otherwise, it's gonna be the checkmate. So that's not even possible. So this is why we have king g2. And now another thunder move. And I hope you found it. Boom. Rook g3. And in this position... Uh, Wesley so resigned and he resigned because he is forced to take the rook and now uh, we're gonna have queen g6 uh, winning also the rook on b1 so moving the rook on b1 was just deadly and uh, with the four extra pawns of course Maxime Vachel Lagraf would easily win what a game this game was just insane and uh, i would like to show you the quarter finals as i promised as you already see magnus carlsen uh, against daniel dubov he won the first game but the third game was won by daniel dubov so 2-2 two, two. Uh, and in the second day of the quarter finals and they gonna play uh who gonna uh, advance to the uh, semi-finals uh, hikaru nakamura lost to levon aronian the second game so he has to win on the second day, uh, equalize and get to the tie break. Uh, we have Taimur Rajabov, Jan Nepomniashi, four draws. And here Maxim Vasil Lagraf won the second game. This was the second game. And in the fourth game, he also delivered um, the, 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 the win uh, and he won three to one. So Wesley, so if he want to advance again, uh, he want to win um, tomorrow another uh, mini match and then get to the tie break and then uh, win over there so that was the scores of the quarterfinals day first and if you like this video as always press like if you for some reason don't like it press and like and if you don't want to miss uh, another quarterfinals round press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one